How much data do you think we might have created lately? One zettabyte? Two zettabyte? Ten zettabyte? Oh no, the correct answer is 42 zettabyte of data was created in 2020. Yes, I'm talking about 2020, right? Now this is the amount of data which we have been generating. And now I know that you might be wondering that what is zettabyte? Because I know that everyone is quite comfortable in understanding the data in terms of terabyte and gigabytes. So now you can count the number of zeros. Those many zeros of data is one zettabyte. And yes, to ease you, that's 10 to the power 9. So 10 to the power 9 terabyte or TB of data is one zettabyte. And 10 to the power 12 GB of data is one zettabyte. And now I know that everyone can do the math and imagine that how much 42 zettabyte of data would be in gigabytes and terabytes. It's huge, right? It's huge. And now let me tell you some more facts. And some more facts are that in 2020, 42 terabyte. In 2021, it was 64.2 zettabyte. And it is said that in 2022, we will be generating around 80 zettabyte of data. Yes. The data is nearly going to double the generation from 2020 to 2022. And with this, I am Anirudh Kalbande, founder and CEO at Fireblaze AI School. And today I'll be talking about how to become a successful data scientist in 2022. doubt that the demand is quite huge right now and the generation of data is pretty high. People with good skills in data driven domain, those who can analyze and understand the data are getting hired like anything. Now it's obvious due to pandemic, everyone has been at home and the data generation has quadrupled, right? It's very huge, very, very, very huge. We just saw the stats, right? And what, what, what basically do we do in this data driven world? So first of all, let's try to understand what is data. Data could be anything, a raw bunch of entries in rows and columns arranged in a proper tabular manner is data. We also say when we have an MP3 file, an audio file, we have a video file, we also call it as a data, right? So they are also a kind of data. It could be structured, unstructured, tabular format, JPG file, an image, a video or anything. So all would be different kind of data. And anyone who can make sense out of it, anyone who can analyze a text, anyone who can analyze a tabular data, anyone who can recognize something from an image, anyone who can recognize something from a video is or could be a data scientist. And there are wide number of skill sets which would be required to understand all of it, right? Which we'll be seeing now. But before that, let me tell you that what all are the designations which you can start your career with or jump or transit, right? If you love the data, what designations are open for you? So it could be like data analyst, data scientist, business analyst, machine learning engineer, data architect, database developer, there are wide number of designations which could fill in. And now let's talk about the roadmap and the technologies or the skill sets which are required for becoming a data scientist. Now there are five core concepts which are required or core skill sets which are required to become a good data scientist. One is mathematics, second is statistics, third is data handling, fourth are some additional concepts and the fifth one is programming. Now I'll talk about all of them in depth that what are the core concepts which are required within each segment. Now when I talk about mathematics that mathematics is required for data science what are the core concepts. So you should be aware of matrix operations, linear algebra, differential calculus and some additional topics in line to that. And then within statistics there are wide number of applications like statistics is the heart of data science. It is used to take inference. It is used to take decisions. What are you taking or what are you doing out of that data? 
So the concepts like measure of central tendencies, measure of spread or measure of dispersion, what we also call it, shaping arguments, and then some statistical applications for inferential analytics. These are all bifurcated topics which are required within statistics. And then when we talk about programming, within programming, it is used for computational of data. Like whenever you'll have your data, right? You'll have to process it. Mathematics and statistics will help you out to take decision from it, to aggregate it, to join all of those things. But what will compute this? Mathematics and statistics will aggregation and then programming language will help you out to compute it on your behalf. You'll not sit over there and write down everything and perform the uh, calculations, right? So programming, it is necessary that you are basically having a decent amount of proficiency in either Python programming or R programming. Both are traditionally used languages for data science. New ones are also coming up, but Python has ruled over the entire portal like anything because it is very really good to use and easy to learn language. Apart from that, R has been over here for decades and that is also one of the uh, popularly used programming language which you should have knowledge of to get into data science. And then apart from that, there are data handling concepts. And data handling concepts, there are like data ingestion, data cleaning, data pre-processing, data wrangling to name a few. Now, these are all the things which you need to do to process your data. Data doesn't always come in its best shape. You always need to work a lot on the data. And working on the data will involve these standard techniques. That is your data cleaning, data pre-processing, data ingestion, merging the data, changing the shape of data. All of these are standard processes which you need to understand that how you can make a raw data into its best form so that you can extract most of the information out of it. Now, you already have a knowledge about mathematics, statistics, programming, data handling. Now, what is remaining? The core additional topics such as the data visualization and machine learning and deep learning. Now, these would help you to either summarize your data, that is the part of data visualization, and in machine learning and deep learning is used to make predictions. Like, these would be certain set of principles, certain set of mathematical processes or algorithms which will help out to make prediction, to forecast something, and deep learning algorithms will give the capability to your machine to think like humans, to think like how we think. Human intelligence would be incorporated in a machine through machine learning and deep learning. So these would help you out to analyze your images, your voice, your text, your tabular data, help you forecast and all the things. So these are the core skill sets which are required to be a good data scientist. Now after learning all of these huge skill sets, right? Yes, you'll have to learn all of it to become a good data scientist because it is an interdisciplinary domain and that's what they'll pay you for, right? But the roadmap to do this or after doing this is as follows, right? Now see, it won't be just enough to have skill sets. You'll have to participate in different competitions. You'll have to participate and engage yourself in communities so that you have a collaborative learning experience. Now this is a fairly new domain. So there is a huge opportunity for research. You'll have to start reading research papers and then try to inculcate something of that sort in your projects. You'll also should have or involve yourself to understand the business case studies. So it is a very good practice to read business use cases of data science so that you can relate your business domain knowledge and then solve a problem. So participate in communities, take part in challenges, 
collaborative learning, do some projects, open source projects, try your hands on over reading a research paper and then try to build your own network, right? These all things would be very, very important to get into a domain. So in addition to your skill sets, what you have learned, you will also should do all of these extracurricular activities so that you land a very good job into this wonderful domain. I hope that this is helpful for you all. Thank you so much.